Hello, and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be talking to you guys about writing some basic SQL queries. Just enough to get you started, but nothing too crazy. I'll be demonstrating this to you using a tool called SQL Fiddle. It's a great online tool with no download required and little overhead setup required as well. If you're new to the topic and haven't yet watched my previous video called What is SQL? I would highly recommend doing that. I think everything in this video will hopefully make quite a bit more sense after that. So before we can start writing SQL queries, we need to have some tables that we can operate these queries on. So I'll start off this video by showing you guys how to make some simple tables in SQL Fiddle. So when you open SQL Fiddle, this is what it'll look like. On the left is where we're going to build our actual table or tables, and on the right is where we're going to type our queries and run them using that blue SQL button. And on the bottom is where a resulting relation is always displayed. So let's edit the left side in full screen and build a table together. So depending on the database that you're working on, the SQL syntax may differ a little bit, but on principle, these are all the same. So what I'm doing now is I'm just creating a brand new table called students. You can use the same syntax that I'm using here. Um, and now I'm creating columns or fields for my table called students. So inside students, I'm going to have a column called first name, and it's going to store a student's first name in a variable, which is just a series of characters. Not null just means that I cannot leave this field blank, so I have to assign a first name and similarly a last name for each of my students. Next, I'm going to create a field for a student number, but instead I'm going to store this as an integer value. Um, in this case, unsigned just means that I cannot set a negative number as a student number, so the integer has to be positive. What's really important here is the primary key. So a student number has to be unique. I cannot have duplicate student numbers. Uh, realistically, it's very possible that two students have the same name in a school. So the only thing that I can use to tell them apart in my database is their student number. So I've ended that statement with a semicolon that just created a blank table. And now I'm using insert into to actually add values into my currently blank students table. So I'm just saying inserting into my table called students, I'm going to add a first name, a last name, and a student number, and below will follow the corresponding values. So I'm first going to add a student called Kimberly Ellison with a student number 1235, and I'm going to follow that by adding a few more students, Daniel, Zachary, and Andrew. And for each of those students, I'm also going to add a first name, last name, and corresponding student number. And I'm gonna end this entire statement again with a semicolon. Now that you can create a table, we can start with our first key command. Select helps us to extract data from a database. We can select only specific information or we can even select information from an entire table. So let's see how select works. I've created a second table here called program this one houses a student number again, a major, minor, and GPA, all for a student. Again, this primary key is going to be a student number because perhaps students are in the same major and minor. So let's say I want to select everything from my students table. How would I do this? Select star is short for select all. So I'm going to select all from students and run that query. As you can see, my first name last name and student number are our columns and our rows are consistent with what we've stored as values in our students table. Now let's see what our program table looks like. So again we have our student number, our major, minor, and our GPA. These are all consistent with what I've stored as values in the program table. So what if I'm only interested in maybe just a student number and the major. How would I do this? Instead of select star, I'm gonna say select student number followed by a comma major from program. Once I run that, I'm only returned the student number and major. Okay, so now we can move on to our next keyword, where. Select allowed us to return everything from a table or a column, but let's say I don't want that. I wanna filter by a condition. Where allows us to do this. So I have the same two tables from the previous example, students and program. 
and let's say I only want to return the first name and the student number of all the students that have the last name Ellison. So I'm going to start with the select keyword again and I'm going to select a student number followed by a comma and the first name of one of my students. So I'm going to select from the table students where the last name is equal to Ellison. As you can see, the condition that I'm filtering by here is the last name being equal to Ellison. Once I run this query, you can see that I'm presented with just the student number and the first name of Daniel and Kimberly Ellison. Okay, so now you know how to filter using only one condition with our keyword where. But what if we need to filter using multiple conditions? Well, we can actually do this with our operators and, or, and not. Let's take a look at how it's done. So let's say for this example, I just want to return the first and last name of one specific student. So we can start off with our keyword select, and we can select a first name and a last name from the corresponding table. In this case, that would be students. So I'm going to select first name, last name from students. Then I'm going to add where last name is equal to Ellison. But because we have two students with the same last name, I'm going to say and first name must equal Daniel. The key with the AND operator is that both conditions must be true. So in this case, the last name must be Ellison and the first name must be Daniel. And you can see that's exactly what we get here. So the OR operator is kind of like the AND operator, except this time only one of our conditions has to be true, not both. So I'm going to filter by student number this time to show you how that works. I'm just selecting the first name and the last name again from the students table. And this time I'm going to say where student number is equal to 1234 corresponding to Daniel Ellison or student number equals 1235 which corresponds to Kimberly Ellison. So I predict that this query is going to return the first and last names of both Kimberly and Daniel, which it does. And that's because student number equals 1234 or 1235 are both valid. They're both true and they both exist in our table. Well, what if I replace one of the student numbers in our query with a student number that doesn't actually exist in our table? Let's say 0000. Well, this time, I think it's only going to return the first and last name of Daniel Ellison because student number equals 1234 is a true statement, but student number equals 0000 is not true. So now we can move on to the not operator. Let's say for some reason this time I actually want to exclude Daniel Ellison from my resulting table. So I can try this by doing select first name, last name from students where not last name is equal to Ellison. But what you may predict is that this would also exclude Kimberly Ellison from our table. So instead, this is where the primary key is really important. The only thing that uh, will dif differentiate Daniel other than his first name from Kimberly is his student number. And in a case where two students have the exact same name, you can now see why this would be very important. So I'm going to change the where not clause to uh, filter by student number instead and I'm going to change the value in quotes to Daniel's student number 1234. So if we run this, we'll return every single student except Daniel, which is exactly what we wanted. So now we know how to do quite a bit with just one table, but what if we want to work with multiple tables? We can use something called natural join. This allows us to create composite or compound tables, and this is only one of the types of joins that exist in SQL, but it's pretty straightforward. So let's say I'm going to pull data from both students and program. So I'm going to select everything from the students table and natural join it to program. And for this example, I'm just going to exclude all of the computer science majors. So I would expect this query to have all of the columns from both the students table and the program table. As you can see, it definitely does, but it's missing a row because I've excluded one of the students who is majoring in computer science. One of the key characteristics of natural join is that it joins tables based on common fields or columns. So as you can see, both the program table and the students table have their own column for student number, but this is not duplicated in the resulting table. So now we can discuss order by. Order by allows us to organize our resulting data table. 
Perhaps it's in the wrong order or perhaps we need to present it in a very specific way. An order by allows us to do this. So here I have the exact same example where we just left off. I natural joined students and program and filtered out the computer science majors. If I say order by GPA, then I run this query, it's going to order by our GPA in ascending order. I can also reverse this by saying order by GPA descending, and if I run that, you'll see the reverse happens. Lastly, we're going to talk about some basic mathematical operations, count, average, and sum. So first, let's say I want to count the number of people with the same last name, in this case, Ellison. I'm going to select counts and in brackets the column name, last name, from students where the last name is equal to Ellison. When I run this query, I'm going to expect two because I have two people with that last name. Next, we're going to talk about the average. Let's say I want the average GPA of all of the students in the program table. If I select average and in brackets the column name, GPA, from program, I'm going to get the GPA for all of those students. And lastly, I've added a field here for tuition, and let's say I want to know how much all of the students have paid for tuition in total. I'm going to select sum tuition from program, and if I run this, I have the total that all of these students have paid for university. Thank you all so much for watching. If you've made it this far, I hope that this was a good and helpful basic introduction to writing some queries. And just because I can, here's a really lame SQL pun that I enjoyed. And I hope to see you all again for my next video where I'll be talking about SQL and Excel. Don't forget to like and subscribe.